No, no, Nanette, with singing stars Jeff Brooke, Pam Cardigan, and the keynotes. No, no, Nanette, that's all we need. We get it. Sometime, perhaps, I'll have my way When I'm old and turning gray But just as it's always No, 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 Mrs. James Smith is noted for her funny maid. She's so mean that she won't pay for a good one. That was the front door. Pauline, you heard then, and Pauline has had it. The bell has kept her running backwards and forwards for the last hour. Visitors for Mrs. Smith, younger ones for Miss Nanette. The house is a screech with females. So it's something of a change to open the door and see... Good afternoon. Is Mr. Smith home? I'm early. I'll say you're early. He's not back from the office yet. Oh, no, you mistake me. My name is Early. William Early. I'm Mr. Smith's legal advisor. <laughs> Take a little one step, two step, three step. Come a little closer, please. Like a rose that blows in every breeze. Like a rose in the breeze. Take a little one step, two step, three step. And a little dip like this. It's a step we can't afford to miss And then you glide and you slide Keeping close to my side Oh boy, let's go, boy, let's do things Tinkling every toe, boy Take a little kick, go wide and free Step two, one step, two step, three step Every little step means I love you Are you going in there, or will you wait till he's study? Um, uh, his study, I think. That sounds like a convention. You're telling me I've been run off me blessed legs answering that bell. I wouldn't have come in the first place if I'd known they were the kind of people who don't go to the sea in the summer. My doctor tells me I need swimming and fresh air. Oh, there it is again. I'll go, Pauline. Right home, um, Miss Nanette. Now, there's one I do feel sorry for. Her folks die, and Mrs. Smith, being an old schoolmate of her ma's, offers to take her in. Take her in. <laughs> I'll say she took her in. Unpaid help about the place, that's what she is. Oh, but... Uh, oh, but, uh, it's but... no use correcting me. I'm leaving. Uh, <coughs> yes, so you've told me. That's her boyfriend who's just come. She's got me said she'll grab him and make her escape. But the trouble here is that too many bees come buzzing round. And what I tell her is this. Too many boys round one girl will never land her a husband. Too many rings around Rosie. Never get Rosie a ring. Too many boys when she should have one. You know we'll never bring her. One little name to remember Is better than having a speak It doesn't have to flat a bit But use it as bait Make your catch Make a match before it is too late For too many rings around Rosie Tom Trainer, the worthy young man who has just called, is Mrs. Smith's nephew and the apple of her eye. And he's fallen very hard for Nanette. Nanette isn't quite sure. 
She came from the country hoping, among other things, to realise a lifelong ambition. She's never seen the sea. But all Mrs Smith, who hates it, says, when a trip to Atlantic City is mentioned, is her eternal, no, no, Nanette. But now, let's meet Nanette. Hello, Nanette. Hello, Tom. Who's inside? Oh, some friends of your aunt's and some of the girls. Oh, Tom, they want me to go to the seaside with them. I don't think aunt would approve of that. Well, she doesn't. Couldn't you take me? I'll tell you where I will take you, if aunt will allow me. Where? To the concert on Saturday. There's a marvellous programme of sacred music. Oh, my head. Pauline? It's no so use correcting me. I'm leaving. And a good thing, too. But would you come, Nanette? But, Tom... I was hoping that maybe I could have a weekend at the sea. I've never even seen it. Now, Nanette, don't look so blue. But I feel blue. What am I here? I'm not a guest, I'm not a servant. But don't you look forward to the day when... When I can be a good wife to a good man. Now, don't you start saying that, too. Anyhow, a girl has to find a man who falls in love with her first. Suppose she's found him. Oh, Nanette, there's something I've been wanting to say for a long time. Why, Tom... I've confessed to the breeze I love you All the birds and the bees For me And every star above you Each has heard every word Of my secret flame I have told the red rose I love you So the With the best and purest intentions in the world, Mr. James Smith, known to everyone as Jimmy, is always getting into the soup. And that's why his legal advisor has been waiting for him. Jimmy's trouble is that he makes too much money, his wife is too mean to spend it, and he's fallen into the clutches of three little gold diggers. Three? Where do they live? Better tell me, Jimmy. Boston, Washington, and San Francisco. Good oh, gracious, man, you cover a lot of territory. I know, I wish I'd never taken up flying. But surely there was no need to fly so high. Well, you know how it is with me. I like creating happiness. All I thought I was doing was to spread sunshine among my three little friends. It's my charitable heart, Billy. I'm a very ordinary man Trying to work out life's happy plan Doing unto others as I'd like to have them doing unto me When he finds a very lonely soul To be kind becomes his only goal I feel so much better when I tell them my philosophy I want to be happy But I won't be happy Till I make you happy too Life's really worth living when you are mirth giving. Why can't I give some to you? Now, when skies are gray and you say you are blue, I'll send the sun smiling through. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you. Happy to I want to be happy, father. I want to be happy to my life. Make you happy to make you happy to what's really worth living when you are worth giving. Why can't I give some to you? To you, when skies are gray and you say you are blue. Honey, I'll send the sun smiling through. Send it smiling through. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. Yes, that might be all right for you, but unfortunately, your wife takes the view that charity begins at home. Yes, and never goes out, so... Now, see here, Jimmy, is this case in my hands? Certainly. I want you to see those three girls and... Leave it to me. 
I'll get the best terms I can for you. Wow, I feel better already. Oh, there's just one thing more. Uh, that place of yours at the beach. A chickadee cottage? I know. I'm closing it up. In fact, I think I'll go down this weekend and see about leasing it. <laughs> I'm going to miss it. What's the matter, Mr. Jimmy? Are you feeling blue, too? Yes, I was just daydreaming about my cottage by the sea. The sea. Just think, I've never even heard the sound of it. Oh, you poor little kid. Do you know what this is? Oh, yes, it's a key. It is. The key of my cottage at the beach. And I'm on my way down there to close it up. Mrs. Smith doesn't approve of it. I wonder what you'd say if uh, someone offered this to you. Oh, Mr. Jimmy. By gosh, that gives me an idea. Go and pack your bag and I'll take you there. Now hurry, I'll go out and get a car straight away. Hey, that must have been a good one. Tell it to me. Mr. Jimmy is going to take me to Atlantic City. Oh, Pauline, why don't you come along? Oh. Will you? Can a duck switch? Oh, the net. Aunt says it's all right about the concert. Oh, Tom, I'm sorry, but I can't come. You can't? Where are you going? Don't you start using that bossy tone. I insist on knowing where you're going. I won't tell you. Where are you going? She's going to threaten to stay with her grandmother, and it's no use correcting me on leaving. So am I. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on Act One of No, No, Nanette. Nanette has realized her ambition at last. She has seen the sea, and everybody is happy at Chickadee Cottage. But Mrs. Jimmy Smith has hatched up some real trouble for her husband. Detectives have been engaged to watch his comings and goings, and to make things really difficult, has had telegrams sent off to his three away-from-home charities in Boston, Washington, and San Francisco in his name, inviting them all to come to Chickadee Cottage. That's why there's something prophetic in Pauline's first words to Nanette this morning. I've got a feeling there's going to be a terrible blow-up round here. On a lovely day like this, with Mr. Jimmy around. Oh, Pauline, he's so good. Hmm. When they're so good, be careful. Why... Do you know, he said if ever I saw anything I liked in a shop window, I'd only have to laugh, and he'd go right in and buy it for me. Well, why don't you stand him in front of Tiffany's and have hysterics? Oh, Nan, Nan, we've got to get out of here. We must get away at once. I've just seen Tom coming along the esplanade. We must get away at once. We've only just arrived. Can't help that. We've got to go. I'm going in to pack straight away. But, Mr. Jimmy. Oh, and I thought my doctor would be so pleased at me getting all this free to you. Uh-oh. Look what the wind's blown now. Nanette, you here. It's no use correcting me. I'm leaving. Tom. Oh, Tom. Don't touch me, woman. Where were you last night? Why, uh... Don't quibble. Where were you last night? With her grandmother in Trenton. That's right. You know, your father's mother is always your grandmother. <laughs> in Trenton? And how did you get to Atlantic City with Uncle Jimmy today? Oh, that's easy. He was passing through Trenton. He saw us and he said... Why not come to Atlantic City? But you don't come through Trenton to get to Atlantic City. He does. You keep out of this. It's no use correcting me. I'm left. Oh, Tom. You know you talk just like a detective. I've been learning a thing or two about Uncle. All right, then. You don't need to believe me. I won't answer another question. Oh, Nanette. I do believe you. And you won't go on imagining awful things? No. I'll just look forward to the future. Our future. Picture you upon my knee, just deeper two and two for tea. 
me for you and you for me alone. Nobody near us to see us or hear us. No friends or relations on weekend vacation. We won't have it known, dear, that we own a telephone, dear. Day will break and you'll away and start to bake a sugar cake for me to take and all the boys to see. We will raise a family, a boy for you, a girl for me. Can't you see how happy we would be? I'm discontented with homes that are rented, so I have invented my own. Darling, this place is a lover's oasis, where life's weary chase is unknown. Far from the cry of the city, where flowers pretty caress the streets. Cozy to hide in, to live side by side in, don't let it abide in my dreams. Weekend vacations, we won't have it, no dear, that we own a telephone. Day. Then day will break, and I will awake and start to bake a sugar cake for me to take and all the boys to see. We will raise a family, a boy for you. Ah, that looks better. But is it? Billy Early has been busy on his client's behalf, and if ever a man earned his fee, it is Mr. William Early. He's the next arrival, and the news he brings is quite in keeping with Pauline's prophecy. Ah, thank goodness I found you. <laughs> Billy, mm. I thought you'd be in Washington. I've been to Washington and Frisco and Boston. Uh, since last night. I did it by phone, and your birds have flown, flown here. <laughs> what? Your dear, innocent, unsuspecting wife Susan sent them each a telegram inviting them here. What, to Atlantic City? To Chickadee Cottage. Hey! Help. Then it's time we weren't here. It's all right. You sit pat. I fixed it. But, boy, it'll cost you plenty. Phew. Uh, how much? 50000 each. Ooh. That'll be a nice little deduction from your income tax return. Oh, can I claim it? Well, it might be worth it then. But uh, you say, Sue knows? She thinks she does. And if I hadn't met those charitable deductions at the airport, she could have proved it. But now, when she comes here, all she finds is you in an empty house. Sue's coming here! <laughs> oh, hell! Why, of course, what's the matter? You're here alone, aren't you? Oh, oh well, well, uh... uh... Jimmy, Jimmy, if I'm handling this for you, you'll have to tell me everything. And while Jimmy is trying to explain the quite innocent little complication of the presence of Pauline and Nanette, let's hear from them. Tom has gone off apparently quite satisfied with everything. Thank you are, my dear. Didn't I tell you everything to be all right? Oh, yes, but when he comes back, he'll ask more questions. Let him ask. Yes, but how are we going to explain about Trenton? Never explain. Don't answer. Explanations are always fatal. And if he gets too pressing, just burst into tears. A man's helpless when a woman starts crying. Oh, dear. Sounds so easy, the way you say it. But, but what am I to cry about? Oh, that's easy. You'd cry if he really left you, wouldn't you? Oh, yes. I hate him for being such a pig, but... Oh, I should lose him. There you are, then. Who's the who? Tell me, do. Tell me, hobby, who is the who? Is she fair? Is she sweet? 
I don't care, but I need you too. All alone through the day, thinking maybe I'm losing you. I wish I knew what I could do, for I'm so blue. Frank and Joe hang about. Ask me out, but I never go. If I went, I'd repent. Still, I'm only human, you know. All the world travels in truth. Honest, I don't want to lose you. Tell me, do who's the who? Giving me those, where has my hobby gone blue? That's the spirit. Now remember everything I've told you. Because I think he's coming back now. Oh dear. If only he doesn't start cross-examining. Tom's got such a wonderful brain. Oh, poo man's brain won't work while the woman he loves is crying. Now get ready. He's coming. Cry. Not too loud. Like this. Like, like this? Yes, that's it. And remember, never answer a question. Oh, Tom. So, I didn't expect to find you in tears. I thought you were brazen enough to do... Oh, Tom, please. One minute. I'm not Tom to you. I found out that you're not even a good liar. Oh, you're not going to be a detective again. Young lady, I've discovered that your grandmother lives in Milwaukee. Oh, Tom. Oh, that's my other grandmother. Oh, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to ever see you again. And I don't want to see you. <laughs> uh, that's no use. Tears won't soften me. Oh, go away. I hope I never see you again. You don't trust me. Life would have been awful with you. Why, if ever we'd gone to a dance, you'd have made me dance every number with you. Or, or sit them out by myself. I don't care who you dance with. Oh, don't you? No, I don't. You can dance with any boy at all So just forget me and Act as though you never met me I assure you that I won't feel small While you go dancing fancy free Show the fellas every step you know just raise Hades till they tingle, mingle till they think you're single. You can dance with any boy at all, as long as you come home with me. Doesn't seem that Pauline's advice was too good, does it? But luckily, Billy Early is a lawyer in a thousand. Jimmy. Before your wife arrives, those kids must be reconciled or you'll be in the soup. I know, but how? Leave it to me. Come inside and leave the talking to me. Why, uh, hello, Nanette. What's the matter? Tom's being cruel to me. And she's been deceiving me. Why, Tom. And after all your uncle has been planning for you both. Uh, leave hey? This, leave this to me, Jimmy. Uh, Tom, my boy, you know surely that your aunt's sincerest wish is to see you and Nanette happily married. It was, but now... And your uncle's is to establish you in life... Oh, that's news at any rate. But what's Nanette doing here? Well, uh, Pauline couldn't come here by herself. Now, you keep me out of this, I'm... Leaving, of course, now that you've cleaned up the cottage. You see, Tom, your uncle is leasing this cottage. Pauline and Nanette came to help him clean it up. Then why didn't she tell me? Oh, I'm sorry, Nanette. Just a minute. There's one thing more. You know your uncle needs a manager for his San Francisco branch? I do. Of course you do, Jimmy. But uh, he has to be a married man, doesn't he? Oh, my Joe, yes. Oh, Tom, San Francisco's by the sea. That's right, Nanette. Am I to understand, sir, that if I fulfill the uh, necessary qualifications, the position is open to me? It's no good looking at me. I'm leaving. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking at Nanette and awaiting Uncle's answer. The answer is... Oh, Tom, it's here. Yes. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too.
make you happy too. But really worth living when you are worth giving. Why can't I give up to you? When skies are gray and you say you are blue, I'll send the sun smiling through. I want to be happy, but I won't be happy till I make you happy too. No, no, Net, you heard Pat McLean, John Moore, Jim Tregonning, Douglas Kelly, and Jill Warwick. Your singing stars were Jeff Brooke, Pam Corrigan, and the keynote. Orchestra and chorus were conducted by William Flynn. Your narrator was Morris Keller. No, 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 Net was produced by Alfred Potter and directed by Cedric Zahara. <laughs>